I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you the 13 vitamins essential for the optimized brain. What they are, what they do, and how they work in your brain, the science behind them, and how much you need of each vitamin every day. And by the way, if you're interested in any particular vitamin, below this video there's a menu and you can just click on the timeline and it'll jump to that particular vitamin. Have you ever tried a nootropic supplement and been disappointed with the result? The latest racetam or herbal supplement was supposed to provide better focus and memory, but it was a dud. At first, there's the temptation to blame the supplier for a bad product, or you may think that nootropic just wasn't for you. But chances are the product was pure, and under different circumstances may have worked very well for the benefit you are looking for. The problem is often a lack of support by simple vitamins and minerals our bodies need every day, nutrients that are fundamental to our health and how our brain works. For example, a recommended stack suggests using CDP-choline or alpha-GPC to provide the acetylcholine your brain needs for a racetam like aniracetam to work. But acetylcholine requires Vitamin B1 and vitamin B5 for synthesis, and vitamin C induces the release of acetylcholine from synaptic vesicles on neurons, which means vitamin C is required for neuronal signaling transmission. Aniracetam did not provide the promised benefit because your body did not have an adequate supply of vitamin B1, B5, and vitamin C. Another example, you try tryptophan with the hope of increasing and getting the benefits of more serotonin but you will not experience the benefit of this nootropic without adequate levels of vitamin B6, which is a cofactor and required for the synthesis of serotonin. In this video, we investigate the vitamins that are essential to a fully optimized brain and why a quality multivitamin may be the key to getting better results from the nootropic supplements you use daily. And because of the length of this video, I'm going to have a separate video about all of the minerals that your brain needs for optimal function. Vitamins are a group of organic compounds essential for human life but are not synthesized in your body. So you need to get adequate amounts of all 13 vitamins from your diet or as a supplement. We require four fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K and nine water-soluble vitamins, which include vitamin C and the eight B vitamins, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, pantothenic acid, peroxidine, biotin, folate, and methacobalamin. Now, although most vitamins in your diet are derived from plants, you often get them from higher up the food chain, including meat, dairy, and eggs. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey of 2001 to 2008 found over 40% of adults surveyed had inadequate intake of basic vitamins and minerals. A large portion of adults were deficient in vitamin A, C, D, and E. But even the most dedicated biohacker would be hard pressed to get the vitamins and minerals needed from their diet. The problem starts with their food supply. One study evaluated the changes in food composition from 43 garden crops in the USA from 1950 to 1999. The researchers found a drastic decline in the levels of vitamins and minerals we assume we would get from good quality food. Our body and brain require replenishment of vitamins and minerals every single day, especially the water-soluble vitamins that our bodies cannot store. A perfect, brain-healthy diet demands we supplement with a high-quality multivitamin. Now, the remainder of this video investigates exactly what each vitamin does in your brain and why your nootropic stack is not complete without a full complement of these essential vitamins. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin and potent antioxidant. It comes in two forms, preformed vitamin A also called retinol or retinol ester, which is found in meat, poultry, fish, and dairy products, and is used directly by your body. And then there's proformed vitamin A, which is beta-carotene, 
which is found in fruit and vegetables and must be converted in your body to retinol and retinoic acid before it can be used. Now, in your brain, vitamin A is involved in long-term potentiation, which events affects long-term memory, and long-term depression, which affects mood. Now, retinoic acid is involved in neurogenesis, neuroplasticity, cell differentiation, synaptic signaling, and it inhibits beta amyloid deposits. Now, because vitamin A is fat soluble, your body can store excess amounts, and these levels can accumulate. Now, excess preformed vitamin A can be toxic, but excess proformed vitamin A, for example, beta carotene, does not seem to be a problem. Too much vitamin A can result in memory disruption and in depression. Too little vitamin A may result in dementia or Alzheimer's. Vitamin A deficiency is not much of a problem in our Western society because one sweet potato, for example, offers 28,058 IUs of this vitamin. And a half a cup of raw carrots provides 9,189 IUs. Recommended daily dosage of vitamin A are given in micrograms of retinol activity equivalents, or RAE. But every multivitamin I've come across lists vitamin A in international units. And it is close to impossible to translate RAE from IUs because the translation depends on the source of the vitamin A. For example, retinol versus beta carotene. Now, the bottom line for vitamin A is you absolutely require this vitamin for optimal brain health. But unless you do not eat meat, dairy, vegetables, or fortified processed foods, it is highly unlikely you are deficient in vitamin A. But you have no reason to get stressed if your multivitamin contains 6,000 IUs of beta carotene. Vitamin B1, or thiamine, was the first B vitamin to be discovered, hence its name, vitamin B1. You get thiamine from eating beef, brewer's yeast, legumes like beans and lentils, milk, nuts, oats, oranges, pork, rice, seeds, wheat, whole grain cereals, and yeast. Thiamine is directly involved in the citric acid or Krebs cycle that provides adenosine triphosphate energy that's produced in your mitochondria. Thiamine also plays a role in maintaining optimal levels of the neurotransmitters glutamate and GABA and contributes to the production of the enzyme PDH, which is essential in making the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Now, even mild thiamine deficiency can turn your world upside down. Thiamine supplementation boosts attention, energy, and motivation, and a reduction in brain fog, along with increased mental clarity and less anxiety. Now, those dealing with fibromyalgia and nerve pain report a significant decrease in pain levels. Most clinical studies use thiamine doses from 300 up to 1,800 milligrams per day. The bottom line is thiamine dosing is completely up to you. No side effects are reported, even at higher doses. The recommended nootropic dosage for vitamin B1 or thiamine is 50 to 100 milligrams per day. Or you can use salbutamine, a fat-soluble synthetic version of thiamine, which is much more bioavailable because it's fat-soluble. Recommended dosage of salbutamine is up to 1,500 milligrams per day. Now, some preformulated nootropic stacks use benfothiamine, which is a fat-soluble synthetic S-acetyl derivative of thiamine. It is much more bioavailable than thiamine found in many lower quality B complex vitamin stacks, but it can't cross the blood brain barrier. Dosage of benfotiamine is up to 900 milligrams per day. Vitamin B2 or riboflavin. The two flavoprotein coenzymes from riboflavin, FMN and FAD, are essential to most enzyme processes in every one of your cells. FAD is required to produce pyridoxic acid from vitamin B6 or peroxidine, which is the form of vitamin B6 your body can use, and is required to convert vitamin A or retinol to retinoic acid that your body can use. FAD is required to convert tryptophan to vitamin B3 or niacin. FMN and FAD are also cofactors in the metabolism of fatty acids in brain cell membranes, the absorption and utilization of iron, and the regulation of thyroid hormones. Riboflavin is an essential part of ATP production in mitochondria. And research has shown that migraines are at least in part caused by impaired mitochondrial function. Riboflavin has been investigated as a potential treatment for migraines. 
In one study, migraine patients received 400 milligrams of riboflavin per day for three months. The study found a reduction in headache frequency and duration while using this nootropic. Now, the best food sources of riboflavin are meat, organ meat, cheese, eggs, green leafy vegetables, beans, and some nuts and seeds. Antipsychotics and anticholinergic medications interfere with the body's ability to absorb riboflavin or reduces its effectiveness. Tricyclic antidepressants reduce riboflavin levels. And drugs used to treat certain cancers can interfere with how your body uses a riboflavin. Riboflavin recommended dose for adults is 1.1 to 1.3 milligrams per day. It is usually included in multivitamins and B-complex vitamins and sold separately in 25, 50, and 100 milligram tablets. Riboflavin is generally considered safe even at high doses and does not seem to cause any serious side effects. Very high doses could cause itching, numbness, burning sensations, yellow or orange urine, and sensitivity to light. Vitamin B3, or niacin, or nicotinic acid, is a precursor to the coenzymes uh, NAD and NADP. NAD is needed to catabolize fats, carbohydrates, proteins, and alcohol, and NAD is involved in cell signaling and DNA repair. NAD also converts to NADH, which is the primary carrier of electrons in the transfer of food from your diet into energy. This energy is stored as adenosine triphosphate. ATP provides the fuel that is produced within your mitochondria in each one of your cells. Not enough NADH leads to ATP depletion, which can eventually lead to cell death. Niacin boosts the production of nitric oxide, which relaxes blood vessels in your brain, increasing cerebral blood flow. And niacin acts as an antioxidant, helping to eliminate free radicals that can damage brain cells. Niacin affects cognitive function by stimulating the production of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. These neurotransmitters involved in memory, learning, cognition, recall, and mood. Niacin increases brain-derived nootropic factor, or BDNF, and stimulates growth hormone. Niacin naturally occurs in foods like eggs, fish, milk, peanuts, mushrooms, green vegetables, and yeast. Your body also naturally synthesizes niacin from the amino acid tryptophan you get from food. This synthesis requires vitamin B6 and vitamin B2, or riboflavin, and an enzyme containing iron. The recommended daily dose of niacin depends on what you're treating. Anywhere from 44 milligrams to 4 grams of niacin per day. Now see my video, video that has the full review for niacin for complete dosage recommendations. And see my main niacin review on the video for prevention of niacin flushing and the preferred forms to use to prevent liver toxicity. Vitamin B5 Pantothenic acid is essential for the synthesis of acetylcholine. Adequate levels of acetylcholine can boost focus, memory, learning, and reduce brain fog. Vitamin B5 is at the heart of the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain, which helps convert nutrients from food in, into energy, which is used to make adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is the fuel source within each one of your cells. More energy increases mental clarity, alertness, memory, and mood. As a precursor in the biosynthesis of coenzyme A, it is involved in the synthesis of ne the neurotransmitters acetylcholine, epinephrine, and serotonin, affecting alertness, cognition, memory, and mood. Pantothenic acid is often referred to as the anti-stress vitamin. Your adrenal glands can use coenzyme A, partly, made partly from pantothenic acid, along with cholesterol and vitamin C to manufacture cortisol and epinephrine. Vitamin B5 has a reputation for reducing stress, anxiety, and depression. Foods rich in pantothenic acid include animal organs like liver and kidneys, fish, shellfish, milk products, eggs, avocados, legumes, mushrooms, and sweet potatoes. Avocados contain the highest amount of pantothenic acid among commonly consumed foods with one avocado containing about 2 milligrams. Now, as a nootropic, vitamin B5 is crucial for converting the choline in your nootropic stack into acetylcholine. 
Without adequate levels of B5, you will not experience the benefits of using precursors to acetylcholine like alpha-GPC or CDP-choline. The recommended dosage of vitamin B5 is a 1 to 2 ratio with a choline supplement. For example, 250 milligrams of vitamin B5 with 500 milligrams of CDP-choline. Now, when choosing a vitamin B5 supplement, your basic choice is between pantothene or pantothenic acid. Pantothene is by far the more active choice when it comes to producing coenzyme A and for stacking with a choline supplement. The recommended dosage of vitamin B5 is up to 1,000 mg per day. Vitamin B6, peroxidine or P5P, is a required coenzyme for the synthesis of dopamine, epinephrine, GABA, melatonin, norepinephrine, and serotonin. As a nootropic, vitamin B6 is crucial for the synthesis of these neurotransmitters. Even mild deficiency results in downregulation of GABA and serotonin synthesis, leading to poor sleep, behavior, cardiovascular function, and the loss of hypothalamus pituitary control of hormone secretion, and increased anxiety, depression, fatigue, and pain. Vitamin B6 is a direct effect on immune function and gene transcription and expression and plays a role in brain glucose regulation. Vitamin B6 is needed to regulate homocysteine. High homocysteine levels are linked to inflammation that can lead to blood vessel damage and possible plaque buildup leading to heart attack or stroke. Vitamin B6 concentrations in your brain are about 100 times higher than levels in your blood. B6 is critical to the highly optimized brain. Foods rich in vitamin B6 include bananas, beef, chickpeas, pistachios, pork, potatoes, and turkey. And the problem is some forms of vitamin B6 from plants like peroxidine glucoside are not very bioavailable. The recommended dosage for P5, the P5P form of vitamin B6 is up to 100 milligrams per day. P5P is the only active form of B6 available and preferred for nootropic usage. Peroxidine neuropathy, or nerve damage, has been reported in doses of vitamin B6 of 200 milligrams to 5, milligram, or 5 grams per day for extended periods. When dosing was stopped, symptoms usually disappeared. Now this is with regular peroxidine. I'm not talking about P5P. This is not, you cannot get, it's, P5P is not going to go toxic on you at higher doses. Vitamin B7, or biotin, it's also called vitamin H, is a coenzyme for carboxylases involved in the metabolism of fatty acids, amino acids, and glucose. Biotin influences the use of branched-chain amino acids in the synthesis and release of serotonin from tryptophan and tyrosine from phenylalanine. As a coenzyme, biotin is required for the synthesis of fatty acids for energy production in the brain. The lack of adequate biotin can result in fatigue. Biotin is required for the formation of myelin, which protects axons. Not enough biotin can result in reduced brain cell signaling and symptoms such as seizures, lack of muscle coordination, learning disabilities, hallucinations, depression, and fatigue. Biotin is re required for white blood cell development, which is needed for a healthy immune system and to protect the brain and body from infections. And biotin plays a critical role in chromosome structure by attaching to histones, the structure DNA wraps around. Now, some of the most recent research shows how biotin plays a role in gene expression within your brain cells. Your body cannot synthesize biotin, so you must get adequate amounts daily from your diet, intestinal bacteria, or as a supplement. Biotin is found in foods such as organ meats, egg yolks, some dairy products, and some fruits and vegetables. We do not have a recommended daily dietary allowance for biotin. So you see varying amounts in multivitamin B complex formulas. Biotin is non-toxic and safe to take in reasonable doses. But research has recently shown that it's wise to stop taking biotin a few days before blood tests. Because biotin raises levels of the thyroid hormones T4 and T3 and it elevates levels of the antithyrotropin receptor antibodies mimicking Graves' disease, or hyperthyroidism. 
So if you're using biotin before having thyroid labs done, the lab's results may falsely report you as having Graves' disease. Vitamin B9, or folate, functions as a coenzyme in the single carbon transfers in the synthesis of DNA and RNA. It converts homocysteine to methionine, which is used in the synthesis of SAMe. As a nootropic, folate is also involved in gene expression, amino acid synthesis, myelin synthesis, and is required for the synthesis of the neurotransmitters dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Folate is used in red blood cell production. It helps break down and use proteins in just about every other process in your body. Folate deficiency is found in at least a third of those suffering from depression. Folate touches nearly everything happening in your brain. Green leafy vegetables, or foliage, are rich sources of folate, and how folate got its name. You can also get folate from citrus fruit juice, legumes, fortified foods, and liver. Many neurohackers, including doctors and other health professionals, confuse folate with folic acid. They are not the same. For a detailed explanation of why folate versus folic acid is such a big deal, see my video on vitamin B9 or folate. It covers how your body uses both compounds and what happens if you have problems with the MTHFR gene. Folate is critically important for the fully optimized brain, and research shows that folate levels, even in the normal RDA range, may be inadequate for methyl donation and neurotransmitter synthesis. Supplementing with folate or a multivitamin with adequate levels of folate may help alleviate depression, improve memory, and ward off dementia. Discard or avoid buying any supplement bottle containing folic acid. You need folate or methylfolate, which is the type of this vitamin that your body will use. The recommended dosage for vitamin B9 or methylfolate is 500 micrograms. Vitamin B12, or cobalamin, is essential for the synthesis of DNA, RNA, and neurotransmitters, the maintenance of myelin sheaths, protecting uh, axons, and red blood cell formation. Vitamin B12 is a cofactor in the synthesis of dopamine, GABA, norepinephrine, and serotonin, affecting alertness, cognition, memory, and mood. And vitamin B12 is needed to regulate homocysteine. High homocysteine levels are linked to inflammation that can lead to blood vessel damage and possible plaque buildup leading to a heart attack or stroke. Foods rich in vitamin B12 include fish, shellfish, meat, especially liver, poultry, eggs, milk, and milk products. The two best sources by far of B12 are clams and liver. You cannot get adequate amounts of vitamin B12 from plants. Vegetarians and vegans are especially in danger of B12 deficiency. Regardless of what food and supplement manufacturers say, Plant foods contain analogs of B12, which are similar to but not the same as vitamin B12. They bind to B12 receptors and block your intake of true B12. Trying to get your vitamin B12 from yeast products like Red Star Nutritional Yeast or Marmite is also problematic. These products do not naturally contain B12 but are fortified with it. Typical recommended dosage for nootropic benefit an optimal brain health is 100 micrograms or 1 milligram of vitamin B12 per day. Now, neurohackers older than 40 and those who have a problem with vitamin B12 absorption should use 100 to 400 micrograms or 1 to 4 milligrams of vitamin B12 per day. Now, if you test vitamin B12 deficient, recommended dosage is 2,000 micrograms daily for a week and then 1,000 microgram doses of B12 once per week for a month. And then after that, your maintenance dose is 1,000 micrograms monthly. Now, avoid low-quality vitamin B12 supplements, and the B12 found in multivitamins or B-complex 40 is formulas, which is called cyanocobalamin. This form of B12 is not well absorbed and produces a small amount of cyanide in your body. That's why it's called cyanocobalamin. Higher quality vitamin B12 comes as methocobalamin, which is a form of B12 that's naturally occurring in your body and, their body and that your body uses. 
The B vitamins are water soluble and any excess you take as a supplement will generally be excreted in your urine. This means the B vitamins are safer to take at much higher doses than RDA. But it also means that you need to take them every day. But this advice comes with a big caveat. The upper limit of vitamin B9 as folic acid is 1,000 UGs per day because higher doses of this vitamin can mask symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, you shouldn't be using folic acid in the first place, but even excess levels of folate can mask vitamin B12 deficiency. The upper limit of vitamin B3, or niacin, is set at 35 milligrams in the USA and Canada, primarily because doses higher than 35 milligrams can cause flushing. Now, you will not encounter flushing if you use the IH form, which is an extended release of niacin sold as flush-free niacin, but ensure that it says inositol hexotinate on the back, or IH, and not another form of flush-free or extended release niacin. And doses of regular niacin or nicotinic acid above 1,500 milligrams a day can be toxic to your liver. Not so with IH. The upper limit of vitamin B6 peroxidine is 100 milligrams per day because higher doses can cause nerve damage. Vitamin C is a, or ascorbic acid is a water-soluble nutrient and electron donor critically important for the healthy brain. The active form of vitamin C is ascorbic acid. Your brain contains more vitamin C than any other organ in your body. The lack of vi adequate vitamin C results in cognitive impairment at any age. Vitamin C is a powerful antioxidant and reactive oxygen species scavenger and participates in the recycling of other brain antioxidants, including vitamin E. Vitamin C induces the expression of brain-derived nootropic factor, or BDNF, and contributes to the myelin formation and brain cell membrane assembly. Vitamin C is a cofactor in the synthesis of norepinephrine from dopamine, and it induces the release of acetylcholine and norepinephrine from synaptic vesicles on synapses, which means that vitamin C is involved in neuronal signaling transmission. Vitamin C is involved in presynaptic reuptake of glutamate, and it prevents the potential neuron damage from excess glutamate at NMDA receptors. Vitamin C is well known for its contribution to collagen formation, and is a primary component of the basal membrane in blood, cell, in blood vessels contributing to cerebral circulation. Supplementing with vitamin C improves mood, it lowers anxiety, it reduces fatigue, and helps combat depression. Many biohackers take mega doses of vitamin C, but studies show that increasing your daily dose of vitamin C from 200 milligrams to 2,500 milligrams increases blood levels of this vitamin only marginally. And there is an ongoing debate on the best form of vitamin C. When it comes to the bioavailability of synthetic versus natural sources of vitamin C, several clinical trials have shown no difference between the two. Vitamin D3 is the fat-soluble steroid hormone of vitamin D. The sunshine vitamin is considered essential and your skin synthesizes vitamin D3 from ultraviolet B sunlight. Vitamin D3 as a nootropic supplement is critical for optimal cognitive health. It's an integral part of neurotransmitter synthesis, gene expression, DNA maintenance and repair, and the forms of neuroplasticity needed for memory formation and retrieval. Vitamin D3 is, with omega-3s is needed for serotonin synthesis, release, and function regulating executive function, sensory gating, and social behavior. And vitamin D3 is involved in the synthesis of GABA, glutamate, and glutamine, and dopamine in your brain. Vitamin D3 protects against DNA damage through prevention of telomere shortening and inhibition of telomerase activity and prevents oxidative damage to DNA. And vitamin D3 is involved in neuromodulation, the regulation of neurotropic factors, neuroprotection, neuroplasticity, and brain development, all in areas of the brain associated with depression. Supplementation could be an important part of depression treatment. Vitamin D is mostly made in your skin from sun exposure, not primarily from food like most of our other vitamins.
You get some vitamin D from foods like fatty fish, like tuna, salmon, mackerel, beef liver, cheese, egg yolks, and mushrooms. Some foods in the USA are also fortified with vitamin D. It's added to breakfast cereals, soy beverages, and yogurt and margarine. So check the nutrition fact label on the, on the food label. The Institute of Medicine recommends 4,000 IU per day of vitamin D3. Vitamin D is fat soluble, so make sure that you take it with a meal containing healthy fats or a tablespoon of unrefined coconut oil or extra virgin olive oil. Now to achieve optimal blood levels and for specific dosage recommendations, see my video on vitamin D dosage. Vitamin E includes a group of eight structurally related fat-soluble chain-breaking antioxidants, four tocopherols and four tocotrienols. A tocopherol is the most abundant and bioavailable antioxidant form of vitamin E in human cells, and the form of vitamin that has received the most research. But recent research from Karolinska Institute in Stockholm shows that all forms of vitamin E play a role in brain health. The meta-analysis found that cognitive impairment was lowest in those with the highest levels of toc tocopherols and tocotrienols. Another study funded by the National Institute of Health found that D-alpha tocotrienol is 1,000 times more potent than D-alpha tocopherol in protecting brain neurons. Now, as a neurohacker, chances are high that you are deficient in vitamin E. A study showed that vitamin E supplementation has fallen from 44% in 2002 to about 20% in 2006. And over 90% of Americans are not consuming enough vitamin E. Vitamin E protects cells from damage associated with oxidative stress caused by free radicals. And even the healthiest brain is highly susceptible to oxidative stress. High blood levels of vitamin E have repeatedly been associated with better cognitive performance. And research shows that high levels of atocopherol and vitamin A are found in the blood of centenarians. Those are folk that live over 100 years old. Another study of 15,000 women aged around 70 years who used vitamin E and vitamin C over the last 20 years had significantly better cognition than those who did not supplement with these vitamins. Now, taking either of these vitamins on their own showed little evidence of providing better cognition. So you've got to use both, vitamin E and vitamin C. Vitamin E is fat-soluble and found in plants, some oils, fruits, and wheat germ. Choosing the right vitamin E is crucial because using a supplement with only alpha tocopherol interferes with the absorption of other forms of vitamin E, including the tocopherols and tocotrienol that are needed for cognitive health. The vast majority of vitamin E supplements are synthetic gamma tocopherol or alpha tocopherol, which are not the type of these isomers found in food. And they're useless to your body and brain. Vitamin B can be unsafe when taken in high doses, doses higher than 400 IU, especially if you're dealing with heart disease or diabetes. Now, one serious side effect of vitamin E is increased risk of bleeding, especially in your brain. High levels of vitamin E increase your risk of heart failure in diabetics, worse bleeding disorders, increased chance of head, neck, and prostate cancer, increased bleeding after surgery, and increased chance of death after a heart attack or stroke. So your best bet is to consciously get all the isomers of vitamin E in your diet. And if you decide to supplement, the recommended daily dose of vitamin E is less than 400 IU per day. That's the safe dosage. And look for a vitamin E supplement that is food source with all eight isomers if you can find it. Vitamin K is a fat-soluble vitamin which got its name from the German word coagulation because it plays a primary role in blood clot formation. We have two forms of vitamin K, K1 and K2. The two main types of vitamin K2 are MK4 and MK7. Vitamin K is essential for the synthesis of myelin, which is a 
that insulates our axons in our brain and plays a significant role in the cell signaling pathways. Now, several proteins in your brain are dependent on vitamin K. For example, protein gas 6 is actively involved in apoptosis, mitogenesis, neuron, and glial cell growth. And the vitamin MK4 plays a unique role in the fight against oxidative stress and inflammation. Research into the implication of vitamin K in brain health is ongoing. But so far, it is clear that this vitamin is crucial for the optimized brain. One recent study showed increased dietary intake of vitamin K is associated with better memory, particularly in older adults. You get vitamin K2 primarily from meat like chicken, pork, beef, egg yolks, milk, and cheese. K2 is higher in meat and dairy products from grass-fed animals. And you get vitamin K1 from green leafy vegetables. As a nootropic, find a supplement that includes vitamin K1 and K2, which includes both MK4 and MK7. Natural health professionals recommend at least 2,000 micrograms of K2, of which at least 100 micrograms should be in the form of MK7. Recent research shows that all four fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K work synergistically for optimal health and brain function. Most multivitamins contain vitamin and mineral dosages based on the government-published Recommended Daily Allowance, or RDA. Now, in the USA, the most recent RDA recommendations were published in 1968, but there is an inherent weakness in the RDA because it's like the authorities attempting to create a shirt that would fit 95 out of 100 people. Not going to happen. And consider this. The minimum RDA of each vitamin and mineral is what the authorities considered in 1968 to be the minimum of each nutrient necessary to sustain life. Not necessarily to make you feel great, just to keep you alive. For the dedicated biohacker working toward optimal health and cognition, we look at the clinical data and how we feel to determine what we need. Now, I wrote a post on this called How to Select the Best Multivitamin for Brain Function. I'll include a link to it below this video. And it tells you what to look for when it comes to quality. And the multivitamin that I use every day and I highly recommend is the Performance Lab Nutrigenesis Multi for Men. And my wife uses the one for women. Best multivitamin I've ever used. I'll provide a link to that below this video. It contains all 13 vitamins we covered in this video at dosages that your body and brain need every day. Now use the recommended dosages in this video as a general guide when reading multivitamin labels. Your body and brain require each of the 13 vitamins that I talked about every day for optimal health. Some, that, some you will get from a healthy diet preferably with organic vegetables and fruit and grass-fed meat products. But the remainder must be supplied by supplementing with the right multivitamin every day. You'll feel better and your nootropic stack has a more likely chance of providing the benefits you're looking for. So that's my report on vitamins. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to Nootropics Expert and search for 13 vitamins or click on the link below this video. There, you'll find a full transcript of this video. And over on Nootropics Expert, you'll also find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics in use today. Now, if you have any questions or you want to share your experience using vitamins or multivitamins, please use the comment section below this video or at the bottom of my 13 vitamins article on Nootropics Expert. I try my best to respond to comments and questions as quickly as I can. If you haven't already, download your free copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. It's nearly 100 pages and contains details on 92 of the most popular nootropics used today. And consider getting a copy of my book, Head First, The Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain with Nootropic Supplements. Head First is only $37 and it's nearly 600 pages and the best guide on the planet for fixing and optimizing your brain. You'll find a link below this video for the book. And if you could use some personal help with choosing the right nootropics or figuring out how to deal with your own brain health issues, consider booking a personal consultation with me. You'll find a link to my calendar below. 
And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.